I'm just gonna ask you straight to the point, does Eric fake his videos? Oh. <laughs> uh. This 15 million sub YouTuber just got caught faking his videos. I am the best. Known for spectacle like challenges. Today we have 12 hours to try to break 100 dumb laws. He is one creator said to be the next Mr. Beast. I think he's the next person to get 100 million subscribers. And he's a psychopath. Let's go! He's the kind of guy that would walk across America. Well, the fakery is an abysmal issue to some, it actually reveals a bigger change on YouTube. Hey guys, it's Nana. Yes, people are mad that Eric is faking videos. Now, I found this somewhat surprising in 2024 because the most criticism you'll get for a fake video these days is someone typing staged in the comments and then moving on. Some people evenly, openly fake videos and if they manage to fool the whole internet, it's like... <laughs> when I saw video after video criticizing Eric, I thought I'd investigate further. To close out 2023, Eric presented a challenge to himself and his viewers. Starting December 1st, I'm gonna be traveling around the entire globe, uploading 30 videos in 30 days to make the most of every second that we have left. Now, I've taken on tons of huge challenges in my time on YouTube, but this is something bigger that I don't even know if the Mafia is ready for. I'm gonna be circling the globe over the next 30 days, ending in New York City on New Year's Eve. You guys are invited. But if I miss a day, my channel and all of my videos get deleted forever. He mentions in this promo video that YouTube has not changed, implying that this stunt is going to be so big, it'll make a cultural impact on the platform. And I mean, how could it not? Traveling for one month and uploading those videos till 2024? I can't even write a single script in a day. For him to upload Eric styled videos daily is a challenge for sure. That's right, we're crossing the entire continent of Europe in a perfectly straight line. Except, this wasn't what he did as exposed by the creator Soggy Serial. Eric should instead be crowned as a king of faking content. Not because of the amount he fakes, but because of how well he does it and keeps getting away with it. By the way, major props to this creator. Straight to the point, I feel like commentary like this is so rare to see these days. Anyway, in a series of videos, he proves the challenge to be a fugazi. You know what a fugazi is? No. Fugazi, it's a uh, fake. Again, the challenge is essentially to do a lap around the entire world in 30 days for the month of December. Upload those videos daily or else his channel is deleted by Mr. Beast. His video starts off in Ireland and the evidence for the fraud starts appearing day one. Soggy Serial points out a parade happening in the video. There's some kind of parade happening. All the roads around here are closed down. But when he looks up the type of parade it is, he finds out it's something called the Dublin Service Parade, which happened on September 2. Even more damning, in episode 3, you clearly see his watch displaying September 12. He also points out unusual weather patterns that don't coincide with December weather in Europe. So overall, he does a great job in proving this challenge isn't what it seems. Eric responds in a comment. Yo, appreciate the feedback. We are out shooting the series as we speak, but as I mentioned in the videos, some of them were shot before the series so we could give ourselves a head start to edit and make the vids as good as possible. Biggest lesson is to more clearly communicate, uploading every day while I travel around the world. I think I could have been more clear in the exact constraints for sure. Appreciate the feedback a bunch and hope you guys enjoy the back half of the series. Heart. Well, I guess the challenge is just him uploading pre-recorded videos every day while he's traveling. But can you really call that a challenge then? If you answered yes, fine. The View has Eric beat since they play five days a week for I don't know how many years it's been. The consequences for missing an upload doesn't seem like that big of a deal when you put it this way. Now, Soggy Serial reveals a fakery goes even deeper to videos outside of this challenge. This video, for instance, called Cycling Across 38 Miles of Ice illustrates him traveling to this isolated area in Minnesota called The Angle. So our goal is to somehow get to The Angle and spend the most amount of money. His goal is to sneak into The Angle and spend money to help its struggling economy due to COVID restrictions. While this mission was framed as this very dangerous illegal stunt for the benefit of the people, it wasn't. Long story short, he fakes it and is actually staying at a resort nearby. The video even reveals that other YouTubers who have worked with Eric have confirmed that some of his videos are fake.
This, of course, was a shortened version of Soggy Serial's investigation. If you want to see the details, I highly recommend watching his videos. To get more confirmation, I decided to get into contact with someone who's been in Arax videos before. Phidias. Phidias. It is me. Arax replied to my text on Instagram. I'm going to put me on YouTube video. This is actually the best day of my life. I'm just going to ask you straight to the point. Does Arax fake his videos? Oh. <laughs> uh... Because, you know, this person really helped me in my life. I was inside his videos. He, if he wasn't for him, I was not going to be a YouTuber. And I want to say that to uh, tell the truth, but I, we, I will, I will skip this, uh, uh, <laughs> this question because I don't, I don't want to share anybody. There's something going on with Eric's channel, and it has some of his older fans questioning what happened to the old Eric. Now, I first noticed this occurrence when I saw that he was doing the same type of content as people who did videos that appealed to kids. One theory on why Eric fakes videos is pretty simple. Competition. Eric and kids content sometimes do videos on the same premise. I tried some random food, testing whatever one star thing. There is a difference though because they seem to attract different viewers. Eric does look like he has kid viewers, but also males in their late teens to early 20s. I wonder if these guys feel weird that they're watching the same thing as these kids. Well, I guess it's no different than a Taylor Swift concert. Someone like Brett Rivera appeals to almost exclusively all preteens and kids. So what's so different? Let's, you know, look at a video with the same premise. Surviving 50 hours in a nuclear bunker. One video from Eric. Watch out! Run! A nuclear missile just went off and we're going to be surviving 50 hours in an underground bunker. The other from the kids channel, the Stokes Twins. We are currently above one of the world's largest doomsday bunkers and for the next 50 hours, we're going to simulate exactly what it would be like to be trapped 200 feet underground. We got that same loud dramatic intro for attention, guys. I will say Eric is much better though. This video has two storylines. They have their friend going into this ghetto bunker while they're in this bougie one. The bathroom. <laughs> what? It's getting no, no, no. If you're a 20 year old male, write down in the comments below how much you like these PG-13 jokes. Let's switch it up and watch the Stoke Twins. So who's next? If I fall, you know, I got my third lady cat. <laughs> Wait, is this actually for kids? And we have to survive off only what's inside the bunker. Yeah, let's do it. Wait, wait, wait. Does anybody have an iPhone 4 charger? My phone's about to die. I hate this. To make sure we stayed the entire 50 hours, we had the owner of this bunker plant C4 explosives that would go off if we tried to leave early. Yeah, right. Does he want to be sued? So this is like diving into the realm of skits. They're doing a skit of being a ARAC or being a challenge YouTuber. Sean's asleep in your bed. Want us to wake him up? No, it looks like he's having a good dream. Welcome, Sean. Tell me where it hurts, you bad, bad boy. I have a bad case of this for you. What is this? Like, you would never see this on Sesame Street. And look, it's one of those most replayed moments in the video. Is this really for kids? Yes, look, look at all the people responding to this. They're like seven. Let's ignore those inappropriate jokes for now. But overall, they were edited very similarly. They're even similar lengths and have similar thumbnails. Other than the skits, the main thing that really separates these two videos is that Arax is supposedly real. We saw that with that whole emotional moment that really drove the video home. But now the whole concept is being put into question. We'd be basically watching a Stokes Twins video that's more appropriate and has better acting if that whole thing were fake. So one theory for the fake videos is that Arax just can't compete. For people that watch Arax just for the entertainment, this really doesn't matter but he has this core fan base that really looks up to him for a story. For Eric, judging from the pizza party meetup he had in New York City in 2022, there is a portion of his fan base that are typically males in their teens to early 20s. The reason they like him is probably different from the reason the eight-year-old likes him. 
For the older portion of his audience, he appeals to them because he appeals to the young person who grew up on YouTubers and now would do anything to become a YouTuber themselves. Airbag just hit 10 million subs. You see this in the attitude of his early videos with stunts like sneaking an entire school bus to a music festival or creating a restaurant that sells frozen pizza. These stunts were not clickbait. That is burned to sh And it showed that he was willing to go all out and make the most entertaining video. I will say that some of the stunts he pulled were morally questionable, such as stalking Logan Paul and showing up to his house. But if we ignore that overall, Eric's story is the underdog archetype that makes it to the top through hard work and dedication. I can't believe this all happened. I literally can't believe it. If he can do it, we can do it too. You'll even see that many people who follow in Eric's footsteps are a similar age to him, make similar content, and somehow gift him the same thing. The aspiring YouTuber, this story was so inspiring in fact that he built a course based on it. There have been YouTube educators before who have courses, but this was marketed to the kid that watched YouTube and now wants to be just like him. So I know that you mentioned Mr. Beast as well, but I guess what do you think about Eric and or Mr. Beast? Like what about them inspired you to become a YouTuber? Well, I, I remember when I was uh, 19 years old, now I'm 23. I was in, in my room and I was really crying like a baby. I was like, oh my God, like this, especially for Mr. Beast, this guy is like, make it a business and he's having fun and he can combine these two things and just do whatever he wants. I was like, I want this. I want this for my life. I remember that the reason I did this entire challenge was to show what's possible. And I remember the way that you guys have supported me through all these challenges over the craziest past year and a half of my life. For those fans, the fake videos are pretty much like a celebrity endorsing drugstore skincare. You don't use that. Tell us what you really use to make yourself look young. Botox? Baby's blood? You can't just say to a bunch of your students, to win YouTube, you need to fake everything. Instead of saying Mr. Beast one million times, just say it once and then replay it. Mr. Beast, 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 Mr. Beast. Does Eric fake videos? This question triggers me because of the lengths that we go to to make sure that videos are not faked, unscripted, completely real. It's easy to see what would motivate someone to fake videos. If you were to create this style of challenge weekly, I would say that's hard to sustain. There's no way there isn't a week where he fails. However, the fakery seems to go against his pursuit of happiness-like philosophy. Sounds impossible. Well, uh, if you haven't caught on already, we usually make the impossible happen. The philosophy that inspires his older audience. Imagine trying to be the next Mr. Beast, but forgot to add the real aspect of it. Bro has to make a response for the allegations. You can't hide forever. I really enjoy the part where he lied to all of us. Great content, not gonna lie. Makes me not want to buy the hoodie. I was about to get, but that's okay. Seems like you don't need the money. Your life seems easy enough traveling to cool places, not around the world. Also, not in 30 days for that clout. I really like you, Eric. Thanks for the entertainment while it lasted. You know what would be more entertaining? Doing a real video. That'd be so cool. You should try it out. He hasn't uploaded any new videos since the one because he's busy pre-taping his next 30-day challenge. Bro needs to change his channel to fake rap. <laughs> Eric, how does it feel sitting in the apartment that your mafia bought you while you uploaded at the 30-day challenge every day, eating a donut on your chair? So if this competition is so hard, why not just fully transition into doing content for kids? That way you can fake everything and call it a skit. There are only two reasons why I think he hasn't done this yet. The first is that he still wants that older audience that will buy into his course. The second is ego. I'm gonna be honest with you, even though they do get more views, no one really respects kids' content. I think even though that it's harder to get views, Eric rather be grouped in with a Ryan Trahan than a Brent Rivera. But Eric is torn. Since I was a little kid, I've, I've wanted to be a YouTuber since I was in fifth grade. I mean, I just love YouTube. I'm just competitive. I just want to win. He's highly competitive and he wants that Mr. Beast throne. But getting it the way Mr. Beast did is infinitely harder today than it was back then. Eric fakes his videos because he's feeling the pressure from the dreaded plateau. Whenever a YouTuber hits around 10 to 20 million subscribers, they start plateauing. 
beyond 20 million, there just might not be enough people that relate to your personality to continue your growth. For you non-obsessed YouTuber watchers, it's like starting a channel based on running. Not everyone likes running, not everyone has legs. So naturally your viewership is lower compared to creators who do say personality videos. Your viewership is capped to the people who only like running. Same goes for personality. Your viewership is capped for people who like that personality. He's one of the people who Mr. Beast have named as like a person who could catch up to Mr. Beast. I don't know if Mr. Beast still thinks that. He said that about a year ago. But if they are talking about the next Mr. Beast in terms of view count and subscriber count, Eric is not it. For now, at least. Let me explain. So this is an old school Mr. Beast video called I Won Every Prize at a Theme Park. It was uploaded uh, four years ago and has 169 million views. Let's watch some of this video and you tell me if you think this video would get that amount of views if it were uploaded today. Me and the boys are going to win every single prize at one of the largest theme parks in America. Pretty similar intro he does today. Today I feel like he's just a little bit louder. Dude, watch this. Still nothing. Did you guys win? I did. This is like just a vlog of them going to a theme park and winning everything. It's not clickbait because they're actually doing the thing, but there's more vlog elements. Alright, that was the last one. Got the horses, man. Oh, and another difference is that Chandler has more lines. But based on challenge videos today, I'm gonna go with no. This video would not get the views it did if it were uploaded today. Eric's videos aren't exactly like this, but they're similar in that there's still an element of vlog and some personality. However, a video like this wouldn't get 100 million views today, and that's because spectacle content was rare four years ago. We spent all our money on videos, and so we have no other choice than to be a portable carnival. Because it was so risky and expensive to pull these stunts, videos like this would only be produced once in a blue moon. The rarity of these videos allowed for these vlog-like spectacles, such as early Mr. Beast videos, to constantly trend. Roman Atwood and Logan Paul are other examples of creators who produce these kinds of videos. The extreme stunt with a whole lot of backstory and personality. They didn't do it as much as Mr. Beast, but they're still a very prominent part of their video portfolio. I don't know if it's even possible to get a 23 million viewed vlog these days. Eventually, creators with Mr. Beast leading the charge would find out viewers didn't really care about the backstory. They wanted to see the stunt right away. Additionally, spectacle content became a genre, with many attempting to become the next Mr. Beast. These events have transformed and optimized what spectacle content looks like today. Today, it isn't rare, and we've cut out all the boring parts so that you keep watching. So a 100 million viewed video looks very different today than it did back then. And I don't think people realize that. A hundred million viewed video usually entails music, which makes sense because of the replay factor. But it's also running things over with a car, fake building things, this colorful baby video. Other than the music, 100 million viewed videos appeals to everyone, or to all babies. There's no language, no personality, just do the thing. It does not look like an ARAC video. ARAC, among others, are still making the old plays of 2016 and hoping for those same numbers. When you look at the data, they are just not hitting those targets. By 15 million subscribers where ARAC currently sits, Mr. Beast was almost always consistently hitting that 100 million viewed mark. ARAC has even tried to hop on the primitive building bandwagon. So for the past two months, I've had a team of those exact same guys building a custom one for me to spend the next day in. A genre that is known to get 100 million views per video. But with his, there was just too much talking and personality that his audience became capped to the people that liked his personality. Mr. Beast is the only creator who has successfully transcended the plateau while remaining a personality. But it's not without any strategy or sacrifice. Mr. Beast has cut out the transitory phases or whatever and concentrates on the spectacle. He places less emphasis on personality. 
So I mean this with the utmost respect, but I know nothing about this guy from the videos. I found the restroom. I'm sure he's very nice though, but it makes sense to do this. Now all the videos will appeal to more people. You don't have to worry about one person not liking him because he talks about sports too much. He's a Swifty or he's into math. It's all about the spectacle. Whoa, $10,000 every day you survive a grocery store? That subject appeals to every age, every gender, and every personality, allowing him to supersede that dreaded plateau and get views like crazy. Now, Mr. Beast is currently trying to bring back more storytelling into his content as revealed by this tweet here. This is because shorts, reels, TikToks have drastically shortened, no pun intended, spectacle content even more. I think Mr. Beast realizes that it's now harder to get someone to watch a 15 to 20 minute video of the modern day 100 million viewed video in that vlog styled form. Exhibit A, this TikTok has over 100 million views. I don't know about you, but I will not be watching a 20 minute behind the scenes of someone setting this up. As a new long form strategy, Mr. Beast has instead doubled down on dubbing his videos in other language to expand his reach globally. He also creates content exclusively for short form. This is how I believe he keeps those numbers up. Now, if you're an old school Mr. Beast fan, don't get too excited. It doesn't mean that these vlog style videos are coming back to YouTube now that spectacle content is harder to do. To me, the modern content still showcases family-friendly personalities that appeal to a general audience. There's nothing wrong with this, by the way. I've heard interviews where Jimmy says that his group is naturally like this. Authenticity, personality, and storytelling still lead to significant and impactful viewership, but it doesn't always equal more views. I know every single YouTuber knows this deep down, but also a lot of YouTubers are highly competitive and can't help but want those numbers and custom play button. This is where YouTube's fake authenticity problem comes from. In order to attain those numbers, faking content in order to get that high viewership is so tempting. So what about your videos? Are your videos fake? No, I am very proud to say that my videos are not fake. Yeah, I feel like that genre is very prone to the temptation of faking just because it's like, hey, I got to make something weekly or monthly and it has to be big. It has to be this huge spectacle. And I'm sure you've worked with other creators in that genre. And I obviously don't want you to name names or call people out. But if you could give a percentage of the people you worked with, have you uh, met with anyone who faked videos? For the people that they are doing my kind of content, I think around the 50% mark. Oh, wow. Some where some other YouTubers fall in the trap. It's uh, because some of their videos are real. The, they are they are easily fake in the other videos. Uh, and they you think, oh, because that was real, the other video is not real. But anyway, I don't... I'm, I'm not speaking about the Arab, I'm, I'm talking about a lot of YouTubers now. If anyone is catching up to him, it's sadly one of those kids' channels. No, no, not like that. That's a corporation, so I wouldn't count it. I'm talking about content like Brent Rivera, the Stokes twins, Preston. Yes, I know. I'm disappointed too. This week, we take kissing lessons. I understand that these YouTubers can be quite cringe, for lack of a better term. But emotions aside, their view count is undeniable. Drama and commentary have hounded these channels, but they're unstoppable. They even have the advantage of hopping on a trend and faking the results to be more dramatic and clickbait for their kid audience. Just to be clear, Eric's fake videos aren't some moral dilemma that deserves cancellation. If you're entertained, then you're entertained. It does, however, show just how much YouTube has changed. I can feel it. You can feel it. MadPat can feel it. Long gone are the days that an individual that is just being themselves can claim the throne of number one YouTuber. But is it really that big of a deal? The fake videos demonstrate that Eric is in a predicament. He is highly competitive, but the road to 100 million isn't necessarily an input more work issue. It's a strategic one. I think this challenge was supposed to be akin to Ryan Trahan's Penny Challenge, but it fell short and fans could tell. One strategy that remains to be working is him doubling down on shorts. 
If you care about those subscriber numbers, it's the fastest way to get them up currently. However, that coveted spot requires more sacrifice. Is Eric willing to give up what makes an Eric video an Eric video, turn his channel into more of a game show, or make his content so that it appeals to kids? Some argue that he's already doing this. I was going to end this video with my prediction for the next YouTuber who was going to hit 100 million subscribers, but it's too late. One of them actually already hit that milestone and it's a kid's channel. Man, people are so good at making content now that you can't just do that thing back then where people would just upload a vlog and it would be 100 million views. Well, I don't know if this is bad or good, but tell me what you think. That's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.